no one will compete with that. Representing Leicester City, Muzzy is it is here. Hello. Hello. Oh, look at that. I can't compete with that. Total yeah. silence. <laughs> and representing right backs around the world, Danny Mills is here. Check it out. <laughs> uh, right, we're going to look ahead to the game. We've got goal of the month today. We've got a really interesting film about LGBT at West Ham and the Rainbow Laces campaign. Uh, Laura Woods is at the London Stadium. She's going to talk to anybody uh, who will talk to her, really. And uh, look, we can get in touch with us uh, on my Twitter page, at Max Rushton. If you want to get in touch with me, we're live on Facebook as well, on the Sky Sports Facebook page. We will read out all your comments as long as they're not too abusive. Hey, Chris. I love you, Chris Akabusi. How are you? Check it out, Max. Yeah. Max, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, thank you Give so much. Give it up for Max, it's boy. Okay. It's OK. Uh, thanks, at least you were... Should we leave? <laughs> no, we're going, mate. We're going we to be going to compete with this, show. mate. Go on. I'm pleased that you were brought in, Chris. Um, David Moyes is your manager. How do you feel? Um, I'm, I was a Bullish fan, uh, you know, so... Um... It was sad to see him go, but David Moyes is here, it's a David Moyes era, and hopefully he can turn things around for us. So, um, you know, I'm going to be behind him, um, I'm looking forward to going to the game tonight, and um, hopefully we're going to get some points on the board and check us out. Unfortunately, I'm not as optimistic as I'm hoping, but let's hope. Chris is calling it an era, Danny, the David Moyes era. Is that going too soon? Well, what have I got earlier, I think it might be. <laughs> I mean, ultimately... They've got some, we talked about it earlier off air, they've got some really good players. They've got a decent squad of players, but somehow he's got to turn around their fortunes because confidence is, is gone at the moment. Sure. It's shot. They don't really know how to play. They've got some flair players. He's got to find a, a way of playing and keeping everybody happy very, very quickly because it, it seems a real sort of toxic, yeah. poor atmosphere. Not, not at the club, but actually on the, on the playing side of it at the moment. Yeah. I mean, I, I, mean, I think you'll, you'll do a good job if we put down, if we sit down a night of itch. Let's get that one in early. Yeah. But you want to start him or drop him? No, drop him, drop him. I mean, mean, although, funny enough, against Watford, he played all... I mean, the first time since the Bolton game, he turned up. I thought, hello, who are you? Not seen you for a while. Um, But really, I'd put him him down and get Masuaka on in that place, in the left-half place, because I was saying to Muzzy earlier on... Welcome to the show, Muzzy. Yeah, so, right. so, 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 no, no, so. Mate, yeah. <laughs> no, I was saying to, no, 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 to Muzzy earlier on, though, right? This is free money for you, Muzzy. No, no, Easy no, money, mate. No, no, no. no, 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 no <laughs> the problem with what we got is that, you know, look at the games previous to Watford. And none of it just shortens around. And all that. It's not as good as he thinks he is, right? And Antonio, who I really love, the first couple of years was fantastic. I saw him at the games. There was a, there was a Brighton game. There was, there was a Brighton game. We need you to be louder. <laughs> there, was, there, was, there was a Brighton game. He got a little bit of digging the ropes. And then he started walking. And then the next game, he wasn't running back. Now, that's not Antonio. And then as I was talking to Muzzy, mm-hmm. he was saying it, it can rub off. And I think that that shorting around Pominatovic has caught hold in the rest of the game, the rest of the team. And so that is, is, a, is a no-no. So I'll say to Pominatovic, sit down, get the Masuaka, who against Watford was our man. Yeah, but, but what about... Sorry, Muzzy, you've got no, a word No, no, listen, I'm <laughs> fine, mate. But, but, <laughs> easy. Uh, you, you've watched, but what about this big thing we always keep in, the West Ham way? Yeah. I mean, surely you've just got to worry about winning football and not getting beat in football matches, first and foremost. Yeah, but, but, but we have got a way. We have got... Because David Moyes is not going to play the West Ham way. <laughs> well, OK, so... But, but what is the West Ham way? Can I just way? say I'm a, I'm a West Ham fan, by Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cheers, mate. No, no, yeah. there's, there's, there's a definite West Ham way. We play football, beautiful football, keep it on the ground, um, one or two uh, uh, passes. We do, we've always actually had a couple of players up in the front who can get it off, off the backside, off their head, the Cotties of this world, the Goddards of this world. Oh, we've, always been able to, we've always been able to do that. So we score great goals, we win lots, we lose loads, we're never going to win the championships, we're not going to win the cup, but we're going to have great fun, enjoy ourselves. I was saying earlier on, when you're a West Ham fan, you work really, really hard, and you come oh, down... Wait, can I say, to... don't get to breathe. <laughs> <laughs> Muzzy, Muzzy. So you're a West Ham fan? Yeah. I am a West Ham fan. Do I need this? Oh, well, yeah. I, I we yeah, don't yeah. know really, but yeah, yeah, use it just in case. Huge West Ham fan. Um, so who are you supporting tonight? It's a tricky one, mate, to be honest. It's, I can't lose tonight, can I? You know, West Ham all my life, but played about 10 years at Leicester, so it's, it's a tricky one. But it's a game that West Ham needs to win tonight. I think they would have probably earmarked these two games, the, 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 uh, the Leicester game tonight, and they've got Everton next week. So after that, I think they've got Man City, they've got Arsenal, and I think they've got Chelsea. So they would look at the next two games as really important to try and get a minimum of probably four points, trying to get, trying to get six. 
Yeah. Just you need that mic, Chris, because I don't you, need you it. broke your first microphone. Oh, wow. oh, right. yeah. Yeah. Um, Muzzy, Claude Puel. Yeah. Um, uh, David Moyes, was, there was sort of animosity when he got the job. Claude Puel coming to Leicester, it was sort of indifference. Everyone looked a bit bored, but actually he's done all right. Yeah, he's done well. I think, I think the Leicester fans have learnt from Ranieri. I think we were all a little bit not quite sure when Ranieri took over. And then he took over and we win the Premier League. So I think we're going to give him, and rightly so, give him time to sort of bed himself in a bit and see what happens. I think Leicester, the, you know, they've got three players up front, Mares, Vardy and Gray, that can cause teams problems. I think the problem was, early on in the season, defensively was a little bit unsure. They've started to do a little bit better defensively now, and I think attacking-wise, I think they're going to be a threat, like they were two years ago when they won the league. The problem is, Max, there's this massive myth that everybody wants to see and watch attacking, entertaining football. And it doesn't happen. Everyone's going, ah, oh, People know. want it a bit, though, don't they? Yeah, they're going, West well, fans oh, he, was a bit, he was a bit negative at Southampton. He's mm. going to come to Leicester and be negative. Mm. You've got to look at the players that he's got mm. and the players that he's up against. Now, if you're playing against United, City, Chelsea, and they're players, player for player, are much better than you, you can't just go out and play them. You can't yeah. try and play them off the park. You've got to be a bit more defensive and be a bit realistic at against, times. Against Man City, we, we all know what Man City are playing like at the minute, and it's, it's just keep ball for them at, at the yeah. moment. And sometimes it's just trying to keep the score down. For the first 45 minutes, 44 minutes, less than done okay. They score just before half time, it changes the game. They come out second half, they score straight away again, and the game's dead. But Leicester, they will look at tonight and see a, a West Ham team that are struggling, and hopefully they'll, they'll come here, and I'm sure they will. West Ham will come out and try and get an early goal and try and attack and, and send players forward. I think that could work in Leicester's, in Leicester's favour tonight because it's exactly the way that they play, they'll sit back and they'll just try and pick them off on the counter attack. Yeah, maybe, maybe though we won't. Maybe you know. Maybe, yeah, maybe we won't maybe, do that. Maybe. maybe the idea will be first 15, 20 minutes, just don't. Yeah. You know, keep it maybe. tight. Um, don't give anything away. Um, back to your game about good football. I think really as a fan, you do want to be entertained, but you're not, you're not expecting the cavalry, you're not expecting people come on. You, you, you want to see you know, Lanzini do a few tricks. So like, like I'm, I'm, I'm number 27, I won't mention his name, but number 27, a couple of years ago we had number 27, and he was absolutely fabulous for us, because he would do a trick, he would do a turn, he would do a quarter turn, he would do a little pirouette, and you just loved it, got you out of your seat, and you loved that. But then again, you want to see you know, the Billy Bonds, the, the Julian Dicks, you want to see a tackle. Do you have any of them? Not at the moment. Problem is now you can't tackle. That's the, you can't actually really tackle like you used to, like like he used to as well. Do you know what I mean? You can't. <laughs> wait, to be fair, like, you weren't allowed to tackle like that then. No, either. no, you, no, you're not, not like <laughs> that. You were. Anyway. I played with Ben Fatty as well. That's, that's such a cliche. You hear that sort of cliche. Oh, yeah. you can't tackle anymore. But is that? Do you really feel well, that? I, I, you watch the, it. the game's not as physical now, is it? It's no. not. It's about intercepting the ball. You, you don't see slide tackles anymore. You're not allowed to leave your feet. You know, you're not allowed to tackle. Not from that, behind. You're not even allowed to tackle from the side. And is that is a detriment to the game? Do you think the game's lost something because of that? I think. Football now in the Premier League, in my opinion, most teams are starting to play exactly the same as each other. And it's like, it, it, to me... Uh, the, the Premier League was always yeah. a fabulous product and a great entertainment because, because it, was, style it was a little bit cut and thrust. Yeah, yeah. You know, it was a little bit physical. It was different to Spain, to Germany, yeah. to, to Italy. It's different thought, to all the other leagues. I, I would have thought, you know, Muzzy would be better in this sort of football and you would be worse. Is that... Fair. What, in this era? You know, yeah. Oh, yeah, must yeah. Because yeah. no, no, one, no one would have come through the back of him yeah. no. every five minutes. But well, you got, well, in the same sense, West Ham have got a player in Carroll yeah. that is a throwback to our time and even yeah. before that, where they should be using him in, for their advantage. Because yeah. centre halves now don't want to be up against someone who's six foot six and can head it, and he can actually play yeah, as well. He can play you know, he can play. Chris, you go to the London Stadium, you yeah. hear words like toxic, poisonous. Is that your experience? I can't imagine it is around you. <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, where I see it, it's great, but I am really concerned about the fans at the moment because the fans are turning. The fact <coughs> is, we've got a choice. We are part of this club, and we can turn on our club if we want. We can hammer it. Look, and I've got no axe to grind. We can hammer the board, we can hammer the fans, we can create an environment where the fans don't want to play, they don't want the ball, it's a hot potato, everyone's blaming everybody else. Blame I've, the stadium. You, everyone's bl you blame everything else. Yeah, yeah. But in the end, we're the guys who are going to be watching first division, second division, third division football if they go down. I think that's, that's a really good point. I think what people don't, people say, oh, you're players, you should just go out and play and whatever. 
but it does get to them. You know, when, when players are getting booed and jeered and they're under pressure from their home fans, yeah. there are players going, actually, I, I don't want this. No. I don't really want to, I don't want the ball. Well, like, have you experienced yeah, that? Yeah, definitely. And, and you start, you know, yeah. you sort of hide a little bit, you go into your shell a little bit and you go, you start to play negative football because yeah. you don't want to make a mistake. Yeah. You don't want to get booed for giving the ball away. Well, well Noble, so, so Noble, lovely player, West Ham through and through. Now, he's got a, a thing, he gets the ball, he turns around and his first thing is, pass only about 10 yards to the centre back, right? That's the way he plays his game, right? But now every time you see him, he turns, the fans start booing and he goes, I can't swear, sugar, I can't do this. And so he, oh shoot, and, he, and then he gets then he gets dispossessed. Ball, yeah. And then and then all of a sudden, people start booing because he's dispossessed and he got Reed doing a slicing tackle, giving away a penalty. So, so can the fans? Is it, is it the fans have to get it from the players, or vice versa? Think, could could players come out and if, if every West Ham fan today in that stadium, you don't think it will happen? That, that's, right behind that's Morrison, why you change the manager. Game. That's why you change yeah. the manager because you're hoping for that impact. So David Moyes comes in and says, "Right, lads." We've heard a lot from him this week, ain't we? You know forget I mean? forget about, about what's happened well. tonight. Go out for the first 15, 20 minutes. Keep it tight, but have a go. Try and get the fans back on your side because. As in England, in England especially, English fans want hard work. Yeah, that's the first. And thing, that's yeah. that's what they demand more than anything else. They want to show. It doesn't matter. You're playing for the club or the badge, whatever. They want to see hard work. They want to see you having a go and putting a shift in. If you make mistakes, most fans will accept that. Yeah. But if you're not trying, like your yeah, mate, exactly. and that's it. I mean, because it, I, mean, I, I know the you play. Don't, you don't go and play 25 million for a bloke and 100 grand a week if he's not good. But he's just lazy. Yeah. Although I will say against Watford. First time, hey man, the guy's running and he's running back and he's trying. But it's the first time in three months. Not good enough. Um, uh, Tom says, does Danny Mills reckon he could do a better job than Zabaleta? No. <laughs> Not for your question. <laughs> Stop, Danny. No. Hey, no, no. Zab, Zab, Zab's on the Premier League <laughs> and World Cup yeah, finals, yeah. World semi finals, and the rest of it. Zab's a top player. Zab Letter player. is one of the guys, if the season stopped now at West Ham, you'd say, good season. He has been a top, he's a, top he's professional. He's a fantastic pro. Yeah, top he's, so, he's solid. Yeah, yeah, every he's single week, he's just, he just, you know, seven out and he's got great experience as well. And that's why we're surprised. Joe Hart, Zabaleta, Kucherito. No, no, with Joe Hart, I'll get, I'll get no, Joe Hart. But when, you know, when they brought all those players in, you're thinking, that's not bad. Mm. Yeah, the yeah, backbone yeah. of their team is strong, West Ham. Yeah. There's something, get this moment in time, confidence is at an all-time low. We, we can see that, I can see it. Yeah. I think all the West Ham fans can see it. Problem is, as soon as there's a tiny mistake, the fans are straight on the back of the team and the team just go into a shell. And that is the problem at the minute. The new manager's going to come in, he's going to try and breed a little bit more confidence into the team. Hopefully he does, but not tonight. Oh well, we know he does tonight, because a point's a good result for both what, teams. Do you know what? Before this show, we actually have a meeting about what we're going to do when we put in videos and we put in yeah. goals and we put in pictures of you being an athlete and all these things. Yeah. But when the chat is that good, we don't need to do any of it. <laughs> um, uh, we will have more of the same uh, in a couple of minutes. See you soon.
welcome back to Carling in Uncle Bar. Uh, there's lots of rainbow laces around here uh, in, in the, uh, the pub that we're in. That's where we are. Uh, and also, you know, it's a very important campaign by Stonewall, supported by the FL, by the Premier League as well. Uh, Laura's at the London Stadium with more on this. So this evening isn't just about this game, West Ham Leicester. It's also about showing for sport for the Rainbow Laces campaign and the LGBT community in general. And if you have a little look, stadiums up and down the country this weekend are showing that support by little bits of rainbow branding, just like this. Not only that, a very special film made by Jim Dolan, the Pride of Irons founder, is going to be shown in the stadium before the match even starts in the big monitors. And, boys, I believe he's in the studio with you now. Uh, yeah, he is, Laura. There he is, over there. All right, Jim, uh, we'll chat to you in just a second. He's made a film for in Off the Bar. Let's have a watch. And my name's Jim. I've been supporting West Ham for over 10 years, and I founded one of the supporters' clubs here. I absolutely love doing it, uh, but I'd shut it down tomorrow if I could. I mean, if we win the battle against homophobia, if LGBT people in general think that football is now something that's more accessible and friendly and welcoming to them, then it won't be needed. It's only here right now because I feel like those people need a space where they can feel safe, they need to know that they feel welcome, but one day that won't be needed. There was one incident where there was just some guy just shouting stuff and I didn't feel comfortable. I had my boyfriend at the time, now my husband sat next to me and it was only his second season at, at the club. And he looked really uncomfortable, and I felt really uncomfortable. And I wanted to say something, but this, and I know it's probably stupid, but it went through my head that if I did, if I stood up for myself and for him, would people in the crowd support me? Or, you know, I, I just didn't know how they would react. And I know that now, thinking about it, West Ham fans, most football fans are decent people, and they probably would have backed me. But it was that niggling thought. I mean, that was really the, what kicked off setting the group up for me. You could have been sat next to a guy for 20 years, you wouldn't know if he was gay unless he told you gestures from the club make people realise that they're serious about this, you know, this isn't just some little box ticking exercise. They want to do the right thing for all their members. We were delighted when uh, when the Pride of Irons and, and Jim came to us to, to, um, to put forward their initiative about uh, Hammerhead being, um, being the first mascot ever at Pride and we were delighted that we were able to make it happen this year. The role of these groups I think is to make that change in the stands, to, to bring that positive change in terms of showing acceptance of all people. Change needs to come across the whole football industry. But it starts here. We talk about West Ham family all the time. You know, if a member of your family came out as gay, you're not going to start <laughs> jeering at them around the, the dinner table. Hitchelsberger! Once someone's brave enough to come out while he's still playing, then, we're, then we can actually say, is there homophobia in football? I think we need to create an environment you know, for, for players that, that they become brave enough to do while they're still playing. We have to wait and see. You'd like to think that in this day and age it wouldn't be a big deal, and the first player to come out whilst playing, you think, look at those lucrative sponsorship contracts that they can get. But most people are decent, and most straight people who hear about the group think it's a great idea. It's an all-inclusive group, like, I'm not, as, a, as an individual, I'm, I'm not gay, but we support the cause. As a woman, and there are not a lot of women in football, it's important to show that women are there, that lesbian bi and bisexual women are part of the football community. We have to be a voice for those that don't want to speak for themselves directly. I'm proud to support West Ham. I'm proud to be part of such a diverse fan base, and I hope that the rest of the West Ham supporters are just as proud to have me as part of that. Ah, that's a great film, Jim. Thanks for, thanks for coming as well. It means you missed the game, which is probably no bad thing at this stage, is it? Um, <laughs> uh, maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> you met Chris Akabusi, haven't you? Um, uh, how have the club been? Have the club been brilliant with you? They, they have, actually. They started out, it was a bit difficult, um, you know, sort of getting hold of people, finding out who to talk to. But the last sort of 18 months or so, I think they brought in a new sort of 
backroom team, if you like, and the guys have really been on board. They've been fantastic. They sent the hammerhead to Pride, as you saw there, which was a massive deal. Yeah. And, and how far do you think football is behind society with homophobia, or, or, or is that a... Or is it not? I don't... It, it's hard to say because I think you know you go into a pub and you talk to people, and I'll mention uh, my husband over there. Um, I'll mention him. Nobody's got a problem with that. Mm. I don't think one-on-one -on -one people do. Mm. I think it's that weird atmosphere in a football stadium where someone might say something, start off a chant, and other people just join in. And I'm sure they don't mean it, but you know, a big chant of something, and, you know, not not nice towards LGBT people means a lot to the people who are hearing it. Mm. The people saying it, maybe not. Maybe it's just some silly thing that they've joined in with. Um, there's a, a huge thing made about whether a current <coughs> top player will come out mm. or not. Does that bother LGBT supporters at all? It's No, I think coming out is a really personal choice. And mm. if you've got a really high-profile high job like football and... You know, we saw it last week at Watford how the, 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 the crowd can sometimes get on the backs of players. I'm not saying that's an excuse for them not playing well, but that it happens. Now, if that was directed at a single person because of something about their personal life, I can see why they wouldn't want to yeah. necessarily put themselves in that position. Because we were saying during that film, Danny, that you don't necessarily think it's, it's going to happen in the game because of... I, I don't think it will. You, you've just heard that, you know, we get anti-Semitic chanting, we still get a little bit of racist chanting, not so much in this country anymore, thank goodness. Mm. But people just join in because it's a song or it's part of what they do. You know, a little bit uneducated, naive at times, whatever. But it's not just about the individual getting stick. It's about their family members, partners, whoever it may be. How will fans react to them? Because in, in that mob type thing, mm. suddenly it goes from one person. It's not a one-on-one -on -one conversation. Suddenly it's 20, 30,000 people chanting one thing. And if you've got family or friends that are close to you in that, having, having to listen to that as well, that's really hard for them. So why would, who's going to be the martyr? Who's going, to, who's going to come out and almost like fall on their sword and go, you know what, I'm going to take it, I'm going to take the pressure off everybody. So, but, but, so, but fast forward in, in 20, 30 years' time, in a, if, if the equation is, you know, one in ten, two in ten people are gay, all right, then actually tonight on that football pitch, three or four players are going to be gay. Mm. Fast forward to 30 years' time and everyone that's out there who cares? I mean, who cares I now? I really hope it's not going to take 20, 30 No, 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 but, 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 but who cares? No one cares. Exactly, yeah. just, but we had, just, we, the, the, we had the problem might be it, it might pitch, come out we? by accident or something. And that, that is the worry, that it will come out at some point. Once it's out, it'll be fine. We talked about it. Players won't have an issue with it in the dressing room. There'll be no well, issue. Know. Pros, it's not, yeah. It's yeah. not, no issue whatsoever. Well, but it's, it's, the rea it's the reaction of the fans and that mob fan culture and the abuse that you would get that I think stops people coming But then it's down to the authorities to, to work on that because, you know, you say about there's not so much racist abuse because that's been, you know, there's initiatives and stuff that but have it, taken I mean, place. But, but, but even when you talk when it, the anti-Semitism and all that sort of stuff, the problem is when it's 20, 30,000 people, mm -hmm. stewards aren't going to do it. Is it different police, with home and away? Police are not going to suddenly clear out the whole stadium. Is it different with home and away fans? I, I uh, hosted a panel with the LGBT representatives from Spurs and Arsenal. They're saying at home, it's totally fine because everybody knows who you are, where you're sitting, everyone is around you. When you go away from home, fans feel a bit more, oh, no one knows who I am, I can do what, you know, I can say what I want, I can be what I want. Have you noticed that? I think, really? well, it's hard to, to say for us at the moment because our home doesn't feel like home. And our home is, at the moment, you know, sorry to newbies, but, you know, it's full of lots of new fans yeah. who don't quite get the culture of the club yet. There's lots of tourists, there's lots of... And there's nothing wrong with that. If you want to build a brand, fine, but it's, it doesn't feel like home. It feels yeah. like a lot of... You know, fans mixed with random people. The problem is, Matt, some football songs are funny. Yeah. And you can get involved. Mm. Some are vicious. Yeah. yeah. And some are really, really spiteful. But it's, you know, it's a whole thing about fans stop sh telling other fans to stop it and stewarding as well. Um, uh, quickly, prediction for the game. You got any hope? There's always hope. <laughs> yeah. It's the hope that kills it. <laughs> we can't lose forever. So, yeah, you're right. Absolutely brilliant. Um, hey, listen, thank you so much for coming. Um, uh, Chris, as well, you're going to go to the game. We've got yeah. you a motorbike. Yeah, so, yeah. You know, will, you, will you come back if the result doesn't go your way? I, I will be, but I won't be smiling. So we'll still be, <laughs> we'll still be <laughs> We can still probably hear you from the London yeah. Stadium, anyway, couldn't we? Um, uh, right, Laura is at the London Stadium, and she's chatting to Jamie Carragher. Thank you very much, boys. Jamie, another Friday night football game at West Ham, and I imagine this time they're expecting for a much different result, what do you reckon? Has to be. David Moyes' first game, I mean, it was a shambles the last time out. I think probably the biggest reason why, or one of the biggest reasons, result-wise, why I think Slavin Bilic is no longer in the job, and I think we felt after that game he'd go. He lasted another two or three games, but new manager in, didn't turn it round at Watford, but your first home game, supporters, Friday night, looking for a big win. 
They're conceding a lot of goals at the moment, especially away from home. I know, obviously, this is at the London Stadium, but do you know how many they've conceded away from home? Have you, have you read the stats pack by any chance? I've read 25 all season. Yeah, so 15 away from home. There's only one team that conceded more. Do you know who that is? It's not Liverpool, is it? Yeah, it's Liverpool, isn't it? Yeah. You did your homework. Uh, yeah, 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 it yeah. is Liverpool. I just I'm wanted to get Man it in there. City, yeah, Man City, Spurs and... Uh, yeah, 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 Liverpool. Quite a few. Should we talk about Leicester? Because for Leicester, it's three managers in a year. Do you think that this time round, they've got the right one? I think he started well. I don't think this Leicester squad is a, a squad that should be thinking of relegation. It's got too much quality than that. There's a lot of Premier League uh, winners still in that squad. Mm -hmm. And you think of the attacking uh, force with Vardy, Damari Gray, Mares. Mm -hmm. I mean, for any manager coming in, you just, you just look at that and you've just got quality, so you know you'll always do OK. I think the big thing with Leicester is, did they end up in the top 10 or the bottom 10? That's, I think that's where they'll be. Yeah. Do you think they're looking at this game thinking there's three points there for the taking? I think so. I mean, I actually think Leicester have got a great chance tonight, really. I mean, there's a lot of... But there's a lack of confidence, I think, with West Ham is the belief there they can go and win games and this pace that this West Ham back falls up against tonight is frightening at times and there is a serious lack of pace in that back four for West Ham. How can David Moyes change that? I don't know. There's the young kids in the reserves who give you that pace. I mean, Font has not been playing of late, but he's been struggling. Zabaleta has been a Premier League great, really, at Manchester City. He's finding it tough. And you think of that pace of Gray and Mahrez on the flanks, Jamie Vardy behind the centre-backs, and I think they could cause West Ham big problems. What do you think it is about this club that David Moyes wanted the job for? Because, you know, it didn't work out at Sunderland. Do you feel like he's a little bit of a glutton for punishment? Maybe, but if we're being honest about it, I don't think he had too many options. He wants to be a Premier League manager. It gives him an opportunity. It's a huge club, West Ham. Not completely finished in terms of relegation. There's a long way to go, just in the bottom three as we speak. But he'll believe, and, and he'll have to try and show everyone, he still is the manager that we thought he was at Evan, and he can get West Ham out of trouble. Quick score prediction, please, Jamie. 2-1 Leicester. Ooh, all right, thank you very much. Boys, back to you. Uh, cheers, Laura. Cheers, Cara. <laughs> nice to see Cara represent the grey heads amongst us as well. I think he might be, he might be greyer than me. Mine. He's going 2-1 Leicester. I'm going 2-1 Leicester as well. What are you saying, Muzzy? It's hard because, like, as being a West Ham fan, so my loyalties are a little bit split here, but I, I, I can see Leicester getting a result here today. I can see 2-0 I can see two -nil Leicester. 2-0 two -nil Leicester. What are you saying, Danny? I'm going to go 1-1. Oh, I think, I think that's a good result for West Ham. No, just to stop so. the rock. OK. 1-1, one, one, you're saying 2-0 you're saying Leicester. I'm saying 2-1 Leicester as well. Uh, thanks very much for watching episode one. We are back on air at 10.30, so don't go anywhere for the next three and a half hours, please. <laughs> uh, in the meantime, uh, Chris Akabusi is live on a motorbike. And here oh, it right, is. Here we go then. There is Akabusi. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what a hero Hang this a man is. I got Hello, hammered in my shoe out the other week. Oh, yeah. For, for wearing yeah, a tea towel. Oh, well, <laughs> that's like Akabusi can do what he likes. Uh, we'll be yeah, back at 10.30. See you later. Yeah. Well, thanks for back. Okay. Sky Sports Premier League. Feel it all.